In just a couple of hours here, the first round of the PGA Championship will be underway at Valhalla. Yeah, so we've seen them practicing for the past few days, right? Just getting a feel of what the course is like and what it's going to bring. But the course is going to be a challenge for, for sure, no doubt. Absolutely. It would not be a challenge for Jim Stratman, though, who's joining us live from Valhalla about some of the holes to watch. It's a pretty unique course, Jim. Exactly. You know, we're moving from an avid bird watcher to now an avid golf watcher. And I'm going to be watching a few things in particular, especially when it comes to the way that the course is playing. In fact, I know that we know that the bones of the course have been pretty much staying the same since about 2014, the last time that the PGA Championships was held here. But Kyle Kramer, who's the head golf professional out here at Valhalla, told me that there have been some subtle challenges or subtle changes that could make for some challenges for some of the players as we get started with the tournament rounds today. He said as we were driving around earlier uh, last week that number one in particular is going to be what he calls potentially a top four or five hardest hole of the weekend for some of these players. There's been some slight changes, which means that now the players are going to have to make a decision essentially from the tee box, whether or not they're going to cut a corner a little bit tight or try to lay it up. They've also talked about number 18. He said that they lengthened number 18, 35 to 40 yards, just to change up how players approach getting up to the green. But the big one here is number 13. That's one that Kramer says he will be watching very closely. It's a very unique kind of hole and it has a history of making and breaking rounds in the past. And he expects that hole to do the same thing again this year. In the tournament, when you look at hit past history, you see a lot of birdies on this hole, but you also see a lot of bogeys and others. So in my opinion, it's a great golf hole because it presents an opportunity to either, you know, gain strokes on the field or you could lose a couple. Now, Kramer says the mark of any good golf course is to make the players have to think and change their strategies day by day, which is exactly what he thinks the Valhalla will do later on this weekend. And as we mentioned, some of those players, they will be out here uh, just about an hour or a little over an hour from now. They'll be out here to start getting set to tee off those first groups. We'll talk more about who's playing in the field today, when they're going to be teeing off in just about 45 minutes. Eric, Grace. All right, Jim, thank you. A big reminder for folks here. So with no parking at Valhalla, we've learned that some people are leaning on ride shares to get to the club. Walk ups we've been telling you are discouraged, but that doesn't necessarily apply to things like Uber and Lyft, which can drop people at the ride share lot at the Parklands of Floyd's Fork, just a short walk from the club. A lot of golf fans are using that option instead of shuttling. Uber from the Highlands. Yeah, it was pretty good. We took Uber. Yeah. So we were at a friend's house and we just hung out there and then we called an Uber. They were quick and dropped us right off and told us exactly where to go. So if you want to use a ride share, enter 2024 PGA Championship as your destination in your app of choice. Drivers will take you to lot X. You'll cross Shelbyville Road on a makeshift crosswalk, which police are monitoring before meeting the main spectator entrance. If you do plan on using the free shuttles instead, you will need to park at the Kentucky Expo Center using the main gate or gate six. Shuttles run from six this morning, so they're going right now, and then they will stop at nine tonight. Gates at Valhalla open at 645 and play will begin at 715 in the morning. <coughs> For a full list of first and second round tee times and all the other info that you will need before heading out, just text PGA to the number on your screen. It's 502-582-7290. It's 605 now. Here's a look at some other news. A man charged in the stabbing death of a woman at an old little retirement home will face a judge today. Police say 73-year-old Kenneth Muse was staying with the woman at her apartment Around 5 in the morning yesterday, Muse called 911 and admitted to stabbing her. It happened at the Friendship House on South 4th Street. Christian Care Communities, a nonprofit, operates that retirement home. Its president and CEO, Mary Lynn Spaulding, spent the day helping staff and reassuring people who live there. We have a chaplain here on staff that is working very closely with individuals because we provide a lot of spiritual support. And I would ask the community just to continue to keep everyone in this community in their thoughts and prayers. As of right now, we do not know the name of the victim. Muse is expected in court at 9 o'clock. This is the seventh homicide Louisville Metro Police detectives have investigated since late Friday. Though LMPD says despite the high numbers, it's making progress in bringing justice to victims. In this week alone, we've made five arrests on homicides. Um, and we get tips almost immediately. The community stepping up and helping I feel energizes our investigators.
If you have information that can help in any case, call 574-LMPD or use the online portal to leave an anonymous tip. Today, LMPD is going to be joining city leaders to announce a new drone initiative. Law enforcement agencies across the state use drones to improve public safety. We're going to be finding out more about that today at 10, so we'll be sure to bring you that.